Good morning and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 14th of October 2019 and the time has just gone 12.15 British Summer Time. Apologies, I should have said good afternoon. Um, it's been a fairly negative start to the European equity market session. There's a few things going on. Uh, first of all, in relation to US-China trade, um, at the back end of last week, it looked like the US and, and the Chinese and trade negotiators had had made progress towards having kind of phase one uh, of the trade situation being taken care of. We've just heard from this, um, on the newswire this morning in the last hour or two that China actually want to have further talks before we have, um, before, before both sides sign up to the kind of phase one of the trade talks. So that's hanging, hanging over equity markets. Also, speaking of negotiations, uh, the Brexit situation is still very much in focus. Uh, back in the last week, there's a lot of optimism to the meeting of British Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Irish Taoiseach uh, Prime Minister Leo Varadkar, but um, that optimism has faded a little over the weekend. Uh, there was an announcement um, from Michel Barnier, the, the EU's chief negotiator, that the trade talks uh, at the talks held over the weekend uh, were, were difficult. So it's a bit of it's a less optimistic in relation to that. Obviously, we had the, uh, the, the the Queen's speech here in the UK today, and uh, not not too long ago. So the situation about how the arrangements are going to play out is very much going to be uh, in focus. And the takeaway message is that the FTSE was a bit lower, and the, the British pound is a bit lower. So there is less optimism in relation to what's going on uh, surrounding Brexit. Um, there's continued concerns in relation to China, in relation to trade. Uh, we had Chinese uh, exports and imports which uh, showed declines on the month and so they, not only did they, they sh did they have declines on the month, they also came in below expectations. So there's going to continue concerns that domestic demand in China is in decline. Uh, on top of that, there's also additional concerns that demand uh, for Chinese goods outside of China is also in decline. So it would, would appear that the US-China trade spat has having an impact uh, around the world, uh, on demand around the world. Um, so taking a quick look to the week ahead, um, the week ahead article can be found on our website. If you go to cmcmarkets.com under insights and then news analysis, you will find um, the bulk of the, uh, myself and the other analysts' updates. So looking ahead to tomorrow uh, on the on Tuesday, uh, we have UK unemployment and average earnings. JP Morgan at third quarter numbers out on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we have UK CPI, US retail sales, and full year figures from ASOS as well as third quarter numbers from Netflix. Uh, jumping ahead to Friday, we have third quarter GDP from China. Um, the London Stock Exchange will have its third quarter update. Um, on Friday, we have the all-important EU Council meeting. This is going to be the big focus. There's a lot of already talk that Prime Minister Boris Johnson is going to have to e ask the EU for extension. And this is, if, if that is the case, this is where it's going to play out. Uh, and finally, on Friday, uh, we also have third quarter numbers from Coca-Cola. Looking at the um, at the FTSE 100, once the actual chart gets up and running, um, what we can see here is that uh, the FTSE essentially, since early October, has been pushing higher. Like global stock markets, it's been pushing higher. But notice how it's still below this red line here, the 200-day moving average. And that comes to play at 72.56. And while we hold below that metric, it's likely we could see the, kind of, the more recent kind of negative move continue. Uh, and should the market turn over on itself yet again, we could see the market retest the recent lows of just kind of in around the kind of 7,000 region. But if you do see a break north of, the, of, the, of, the, of this particular metric and we do press on higher from here, we could look at retargeting 7,400 or this, this high here in around 7,440. I'll take a look now at what's going on over on the DAX. We can see that the DAX is in better shape than the FTSE 100. So take a look at the DAX. We can see here that similarly, the DAX was impressing higher since uh, since early October, making a nice decent move to the upside. But we can see here that it's a bit lower today. It's giving back some of the gains from the from the very bullish move that we saw on Friday, but it's still in the wider upward trend. And if you do press on higher from here, we could be get targeting this zone here in around 12,600, the highs of late July. Or if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 12,660, the highs of early July. Uh, and even if you do have a, a drift lower on the uh, on the DAX, we could see support coming to, come into play from this zone here in around 12,300. Uh, and, and if you move below that, support can be found from this line here, 
the water ready moving average and that comes into play at 12,131. We can see recently it acted as both resistance and support recently. Um, and so if it's been important in the past, it makes it more likely it's, it will be so important in the future. Taking a look at what's going on with the S&P 500. Broadly speaking, but in a fairly decent upward trend since August. And if you look at, take a look at, at it more recently since early October, we can see you see a nice couple of higher highs and higher lows. And if you do manage to continue uh, in the wider, in more recent and wider upper trend, we could be looking at retesting 3,000, and if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this zone here in around 3,020. Uh, if the market does manage to, um, to push on lower from here, support could be found from this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, and that comes into play in at um, 2,938, there thereabouts. We can see on a few occasions that metric acts as both resistance and also support uh, in, the, in the not too distant past. So it makes it more likely that we could have a we could have it, it could be of importance in the near term. If we do have a size of break below the 50 moving average, uh, we could find support from this zone here, just north, just, just north of 2,880. And it's only really if we break below this red line, the 200 moving average at 2,864, should then we kind of begin to be concerned about what's about um about the, the state of the of the Dow Jones. Taking a look. And what's going on on the gold market we can see that um, gold had a major rally uh, for months and months and months culminating in a six-year high that was achieved in September but since then see the market have moved, have moved to the downside a lower low a lower high another lower low and what could be a lower high here so while we, we remain below the kind of 1520 mark here and also the 50 day moving average at 1507 we could see continued pressure on the uh, on the gold market, so we could be looking at retesting the um, the lows the lows in early October in at um, sub fourteen sixty, and if we go below that, we could be looking at heading back down toward this zone here, down around fourteen fifty three fourteen thirty. On the other hand, if the, if gold market falls back into the wider upper trend that's been in play, and we go back north of fifteen twenty, we could be looking at retesting fifteen thirty five, and beyond that, up towards fifteen fifty seven. Take a look now at what's going on on the Brent oil market. So it's the, the trend since for the last month has been very much at the downside. Very aggressive sell-off. But we can see here on Thursday, the 3rd of October, the market, this, this particular candle here, this daily candle here, had a very long wick on it. And that, and that long wick, uh, as far as candlesticks and charting goes, denotes indecision. So we've had a major sell-off. Then we have a sign of indecision. And we've seen the market kind of, push on higher from here so the market has, has rebounded so we could be looking at a scenario whereby the market is kind of edging higher and we could be looking at retesting this red line here the eternity moving average at 64 spot 77 uh, but if we don't if the market doesn't doesn't get that high up or if the market manages to turn over on itself yet again it could resume in, into the kind of more recent downward trend for the past month and we could be looking at retesting the recent lows in at 56 spot 71 and then if we go below, below that, we could be looking at targeting this zone here down around 52. Take a look what's going on on the euro versus the US dollar. So the euro versus the dollar, the wider theme is very much a downward trend. But in the last few uh, in the last few weeks, a couple of weeks, we have seen the euro pull back a bit. So the market, the euro grinding higher here, it ran into resistance from this blue line here, the 50 moving average that comes to play in at one spot, 10.44 odd. But if it holds below that metric, it's likely we could see the euro uh, be be maintained in its more recent downward trend. We could, we could see it heading back below 110, re kind of go, going south of 109, and if you take out the recent uh, October low, we could be like heading towards 108. Uh, it is worth not noting how the euro dollar ran to resistance back in early August so it's possible we could see a, a repeat of that. The, the metric, the, the, um, the market may fail to get back above the metric but if you do manage to get back above the uh, the 50 moving average and have a size of break above it we could be looking at retesting this zone here uh, in at one spot 10 um, sorry just north of one spot uh, one spot 11 and if you go beyond that we could be looking at retesting the uh, the late October mid October high of one spot eleven sixty four. 
Pick it the pound versus the US dollar. Pound dollar. The wider trend is to very much the downside, but as we saw here, we saw a decent, we saw what, what, what appears to be a, can, a hammer formation on this candle here. Remember how I was talking about Brent crude oil, how we saw the long wick which denotes indecision? Well, this is this what appears to be, to be the case, the kind of turnaround force on the, the pound versus the US dollar. The market managed to press on higher from that, from that particular uh, candle. Found support from this zone here around 102, and now we're comfortably back above the 50 moving average, this blue line here. Um, but we did manage to kind of run out of steam at the, at the 200 moving average, this red line at one spot, 27, spot 12. As I mentioned, a lot of, a lot of um, chatter about Brexit. Will Boris Johnson get approval in both Parliament and uh, will also be approved in Brussels? So it seems to me that, that while we, we remain below the 200 moving average, it's like that that, uh, that metric could act as a cap to any potential gains. But if we do have a, of a, of a breakthrough, we could sit and, and talk, we could break beyond that level and head toward this zone here in around one spot 28. Uh, if the market, on the other hand, does manage to kind of um, turn over itself yet again, we could be looking at targeting this zone here, 124, and then below that, potentially down towards 122. Uh, that's all for me this week. If you have any comments to make in this video or any of the other videos uh, we've made here, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Thank you very much.